بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله after some time we continue going over the tremendous book by the Fadil al-Shaykh al-Allama al-Imam Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala and that is the book that is entitled Tafsir Kalima At-Tawheed The Explanation of the Kalima of At-Tawheed We have reached the section which is in actuality a portion of the conclusion of this tremendous book that we have been taking over some time but prior to where we're going to pick up today the Sheikh the Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab Rahmatullah Alayhi he reminds us of the state that the Muslims they're going to be in and the state of affairs of Islam at the end of time as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in that well known hadith Bada al Islam Ghariban wa Sayyud Ghariban Kama Bada that Islam began strange and it shall return to being strange. So glad tidings oh Yani Fir Riwaya uh Fatuba Lil Ghuruba. So glad tidings to the Ghuruba. Glad tidings to the strangers. So with this being the case it is incumbent that we stick to our deen and we hold on fast to our religion. And that we are not swayed by the practices of the people and we are not swayed by the opinions of men. Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, after mentioning that hadith, Bada al Islam gariban wa sayyud gariban kama bada, that Islam began strange and it shall return to being strange as it started. He mentioned, For Allah, Allah, ya ikhwani, tamasaku bi asli dinikum. He said, So by Allah, O oh by Allah, my brothers, hold on fast to your religion. By Allah, by Allah, my brothers. And likewise, yani, my sisters, hold on fast to the foundations of your religion. Hold on fast to the foundations of your religion. And from the first of your deen into the last of it, hold on to all of your religion. Naam. وَأُسُّهُ وَرَأْسُهُ شَهَادَ إِنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَعْرِفُوا مَعْنَاهَا Because the foundation, its overwhelming foundation, and at the head of the deen, then verily it is the shahada, that none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Know its meaning, know what it means. وَأَحِبُّوهَا وَأَحِبُّ أَهْلَهَا And love it. And love its people. وَجَعَلُوهُمْ إِخْوَانِكُمْ وَجَعَلُوهُمْ إِخْوَانَكُمْ وَلَوْ كَأْنُوا بَعِيدِينَ And make them your brothers. Even if they're those who are far away from you. Even if they're far away from you physically. Even if they're far away from you يعني, as relates to your lineage. And the like, make them your brothers. And disbelieve and make kufr in the false deities. 
وَبَغِضُوهُمْ And have enmity for them And hate them وَأَبْغِضُوا مَنْ أَحَبَّهُمْ And hate those who love them وَجَادَلَ عَنْهُمْ And those who defend them And argue in their defense And about them um, نعم Hate those who, 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 who defend them And hate those who do not make kufr upon them نعم أو لم يكفرهم and hate those who do not make kufr as relates to these tawagheet. Those who don't disbelieve in them, then hate these individuals. Aw qal, or the one who says, ma aliyya minhum. The one who says, is nothing upon me as relates to them. Meaning the one that says the likes of, I don't have to take a stance, I don't have to, yani, hate these particular things, or the like, is not upon me. Or the one that says, aw qal, or he says, مَا كَلَّفَنِي Allah بِهِمْ That Allah did not make me responsible for them. That Allah Ta'ala did not make يعني, my affair as such that I'm responsible as relates to them. فَقَدْ كَذِبَ هَذَا عَلَى اللَّهِ وَفْتَرَى Because whoever says this, that Allah Ta'ala has not made anything responsible upon them as relates to the false deities, then this individual, he has lied upon Allah and he has invented a fictitious yani, uh, uh, fiction upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَقَدْ كَلَّفَهُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِهِمْ Because Allah ta'ala, He has made a responsibility upon us as relates to the false deities. Allah ta'ala has made it upon us what وَفْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِ الْكُفْرُ بِهِمْ وَالْبَرَاءَ مِنْهُمْ Allah ta'ala, He has made it binding upon us that we disbelieve in the likes of these things and that we free ourselves from them. We disbelieve in them and we free ourselves from them. Naam. This is binding. This is binding upon every individual. This enters into the meaning of La ilaha illallah. This enters into the meaning of none has the right to be worshipped in truth except for Allah. That we disavow, we disassociate ourselves from that which is worshipped other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we affirm all, the, all of the ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anyone who is sick enough, who is diseased enough, who is twisted enough to come with the likes of the of this type of speech that is not upon us to take a stance as relates to the tawaqeet, as relates to the false deities, so on and so forth, then it is upon us to hate that particular individual. وَلَوْ كَانُوا إِخْوَانُهُمْ Even if they were their brothers or awladum, or they were their children, then we have to hate those who come with the like of the speech. Why? Because الحق يُطْبَعَ because the truth it has more right to be followed. Our allegiance and always has to be for the truth. We have to stick to the truth and the people of the truth and stay away from those who are upon falsehood and stay away from those who are defenders of falsehood. Naam. Shaykh Yuzan, Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab to say, If Allah, Allah, ya ikhwani, ba Allah, ba Allah, O my brothers, tamasaku bi dhalika la'allakum talquna rabbakum. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُشْرِكُونَ بِهِ شَيْئًا He said, stick to this, stick to this, so that perhaps you will meet your Lord without having associated anything with Him as a partner. اللهم توفنا المسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين وألحقنا بالصالحين Oh Allah, oh Allah, make us of those who die as Muslims and unite us with those who are righteous. And unite us with those who are righteous. وَلِنَخْتَمْ الْكَلَامْ بِآيَةِ ذَكَرَهَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ تَبَيِّنُ لَكَ أَنَّ الْكُفْرَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي أَهْلِ زَمَانِنَا أَعْظَمْ مِنْ كُفْرَ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلَهُمْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, and I want to end this, this speech, in, يعني, meaning this book, or towards the ending of this book by mentioning an ayah an ayah that is mentioned that Allah Ta'ala he mentions it inside of his book that that explains with complete clarity that the polytheists of our time they are greater in their kufr than the polytheists whom the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he fought against them Naam. 
As Sheikh Fawzan, ta'ala, before mentioning the ayah, he mentions here, he says, Kafr ahlu zamanina, any kufr, kufr ahlu zamanina, a'adham, min kufr al mushrikeen al awwaleen. He said that the disbelief of the polytheists of our time is actually greater than the disbelief of the first polytheists or those polytheists of antiquity. A'adham min kufri abi jahl. Meaning that what? It is greater than the disbelief of Abu Jahl wa Abu Lahab and greater than the disbelief of Abu Lahab. Naam. لَأَنَّ الْمُشْرِكِينَ الْأَوَّلِينَ يُشْرِكُونَ فِي الرَّخَاءِ وَيُخْلِصُونَ فِي الشِّدَّةِ Because the early polytheists, the polytheists of old, meaning the polytheists of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will make shirk in good times. But in bad times, they will call upon Allah alone. لأنهم يعلمون أنه لا يخلص من شدة إلا الله because they know that none will remove the difficulty except for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. وأما المشرك زماننا فهم في شدة أكثر شركا منهم في الرخاء. But the polytheists of our time, you will find that. In difficulty, they actually make more shirk than they do in good times. When it's rough, they actually make more shirk than they do in the good times. إذن إذا وقعوا في الشدة ينادون مع بوداتهم When they fall into difficulty, then they call upon their false gods. They call upon their false deities in which they worship. نعم كل ينادي معبوده ويخلصه في ال في الغرق في البحر. He said that to the extent that one of them will call upon their false deity even if he's drowning inside of the ocean. نعم even if they're drowning inside of the ocean, they will still call upon their false deity and they will call upon him alone. And they will not call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that is of extreme difference, yani, than of the mushrikun of, of, of all, because they will call upon Allah in difficulty alone, but when they had good times, then they will make shirk. And what is the proof and evidence as it relates to this? Then verily it is the, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it comes in Surah Al Isra and is verse 67. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِذَا مَسَّكُهُمُ الدُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ And when it touches them, difficulty, and when they are at sea, then they forget about those in which they call upon, and they only call upon Him. Meaning they only call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَمَّا نَجَّاكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ but when they are granted safety and come back to land, then they return to their shirk. And verily, the human being is very ungrateful. The human being is extremely ungrateful. Naam. The Allah Ta'ala informs us here that these polytheists of old, when they, uh, a difficulty touched them, then they forgot about all of their false deities. They forgot about those individuals who they venerate and who they have deified and those who they have taken as false deities. Now, from the humans and the like, they forget about all of them and they don't call upon any one of them. And they do not ask for help in times of peril with the likes of these particular in, uh, individuals. بَلْ يُخْلِصُونَ لِلَّهِ وَحْدَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ But they call upon Allah and Allah alone. And they don't associate any partners with Allah in this time of difficulty. وَيَسْتَغِيثُونَ بِهِ وَحْدَ And they seek help with Allah only in times of peril. فَإِذَا جَاءَ الرَّخَاءَ أَشْرَكُوا But when good times come, then they start to make shirk. نعم. وَأَنْتَ تَرَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي أَهْلِ زَمَنِنَا في, في, في زمانينا, But you see the polytheists in our time. The polytheists in our time, you will find 
that they call upon their false deities even in times of difficulty. Naam, wala'alla ba'dahum yadda'i And even some of these individuals who they claim yadda'i annahu min ahli ilm They claim that they are from the people of knowledge. وَفِيهِ زُهُدْ وَشْتِهَادْ وَالْعِبَادَ And that they have abstention from the dunya and they have jihad and they have ibadah. They strive hard and they have a lot of ibadah, a lot of worship and so on and so forth. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الضُّرْ قَامَ يَسْتَغِيثُ بِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ But if that touches them harm, some rough times, then you find them seeking help in these times of peril with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this goes to show you don't be deceived by a person's yani, uh, abstention from the dunya, abstaining from the dunya. Don't be deceived by a person's seemingly level of knowledge. Don't be deceived by a person worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Don't be deceived by the likes of these things. But rather look and to see what is this person upon from aqidah. Look to see what is this person upon from his minhaj. Because in that, that which will help an individual know who is upon that which is correct and who is upon that which is not correct. Because for the likes of these individuals who are upon the like of this, what is all of that going to benefit them if they're making shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is that going to gain them if they're making shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, there may be some amongst us who those who they see the kuffar here from the Christians. These individuals who call upon Isa, who call upon Isa whether it is good times, and they call upon Isa even in bad times, they're calling out to Isa. Even in difficulty, they're calling out to Isa. They're still making dua to Isa. But <clears throat> how much unfortunate is it for those who claim to be Muslims who do the likes of these things? Those who claim to be Muslims, those who claim Islam, you'll find them doing the same thing. Now, if we don't accept it from a Christian that he calls upon Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, who was one of the best prophets and messengers ever, who was one of the best human beings ever, Naam, if it is not acceptable to call upon Isa, because even Isa, with his great status, he deserves nothing from worship, then how about those who are less than him? How about those who are less than him? If we don't accept it from a Christian, then how are we going to accept it from someone uh, just because they say that they are Muslim? Just because they're saying that they are Muslim. How we accept it? We cannot accept it. It's not acceptable. Naam. Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahhabi mentions, he says, for example, Mithil, he brings some examples. Uh, Mithil, Ma'roof. Like Ma'roof. And Ma'roof, yani min awliya. Huwa min awliya al Ma'roof, al Iraq. He was from the quote unquote saints, the saints, yeah, the quote unquote, the righteous ones, quote unquote, who was from Iraq. He's one of the people that the people in Iraq they call upon. Or Abdul Qadir Jalani. Or Abdul Qadir Jalani. Naam. They call upon him in times of peril. You find him calling, yeah, Abdul Qadir, that's what they be saying. Wa ajalla bin ha'ula. And then you have those who are even, who they call upon, who are better in status than these ones that were mentioned, but still deserve nothing from worship. For example, Zayd bin al-Khattab was Zubair. Like they call upon Zayd bin Khattab, who was from the Sahaba. Naam, and likewise Zubair. Wa ajalla min ha'ula, and even greater than those two, they call upon others who are greater than those two, but still, those who deserve nothing from worship. For example, Mithil Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, like the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for Allah al Musta'an, and the and the aid of Allah is sought from the likes of these things. Naam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he is greater than 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 those who were mentioned, and they call upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but he deserves nothing from worship. Allah Ta'ala is not pleased that we worship anything other than Him, whether it is an angel that is close or a messenger that has been sent. Naam. So if this is the case as it relates to the greatest of the angels and the greatest of the messengers, Naam, the most righteous of Allah's creation, we can we cannot give to them anything from worship. 
then how about those who are evil? How about those who are disbelievers? How about those who are from the shayateen? How much more so? How much more so are we not allowed to give to them anything from ibad? Because if the greatest prophet and greatest angel deserve nothing from ibadah, then how in the world does the kuffar or kafir or shaitan from the shayateen deserve anything from ibadah? They do not. Why? Because all of the ibadah belongs to Allah and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Naam. The Shaykh he mentions what a'adham min thalik wa atam. He says that even greater than this of absurdity and that which is even more tremendous أنهم يستغيثون بالطواغيت is that they seek help in times of peril with false deities والكفر and with the kuffar disbelievers والمرضى and with the shayateen with the shayateen they seek refuse with the shayateen and they worship the shayateen. Now, let's bring this home. Okay? Let's connect the dots. We all know that there exists a culture amongst the Latin community where you have people who they come from a background where there were practitioners of Santeria. I mean, that Santeria was or is a manifestation of a West African religion that was brought to the shores of Cuba and the like in Latin America by slaves who were brought here and enforced to convert to Catholicism. They kept these mushrikun, yani, from yani, uh, these enslaved people. They kept their religion, trading out the Catholic saints and false deities and having them represent their false deities from Africa. Naam. Likewise, you have similar from the same region, voodoo. Naam. Likewise, you have which has its traces and and its origin in West Africa from roots, as they call it. That was something prominent amongst the Geechee people of the Carolinas and the like. So you have it in the Latin American community. You have it in the Caribbean community. You have it in the African American community. Naam, so on and so forth. The sorcery that is practiced in Central America is well known. Naam. The reality is that there are many people who have accepted Islam who are from these backgrounds. Many people have accepted Islam who are from these backgrounds. And in some of these backgrounds it is known that individuals, they fight each other with sihr, they fight each other with magic. They fight each other with the shayateen, with the jinn. This one put a jinn on a person, that one put another jinn yani, in retaliation on that person, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not the person they want then on the relative, and you know, like this. Now, I'm so people, they fighting with the jinn. So you have Muslims, unfortunately, who they become Muslim from these cultures and from these backgrounds, and sometimes, if, they don't, if they're not taught properly, they still may be yani, uh, dwelling into the likes of these things and using these things for retaliation and so on and so forth. Now, and likewise, it is well known from those Muslims, from, for example, from Malaysia, Indonesia, and so on and so forth, who have been stricken with Tassouf, Sufism, also the Duna likes of these things. Naam. And in other places, Naam. in the north of Africa, you have this. Uh, in the west of Africa, you have this. In the east of Africa, you have this. In the Middle East, Naam, you have this with people where they put sihr and jinns upon people and so on and so forth and fighting with the jinn, so on and so forth. Naam. Ala kulli hal, let us remember 
so we don't think that oh is this so far-fetched this is not any appropriate or this is not uh, relevant to us in our situation uh, no it's very relevant how is it not relevant when these things happen ma'am and for those who grew up in these cultures you know and you heard the stories and you heard the advice that people would give you don't eat the food unless you see it being prepared because someone could put root upon you someone could put magic upon you someone could do something make you fall in love with them make you yani break up your 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 your, your marriage or yeah huh, make you sick or something like this right how many and, and the people who are from these these things you know you know you know what the old po people used to tell you you know what the old folk they used to say and so on and so forth now I'm, these things are reality and people are still dwelling and dealing with these things. So these things have to be addressed because people, when they have weak faith, if something is put on them, they may want to use magic to get it off of them. Or if yani, a shaitan is put on them, then they may want to use yani, a shaitan to get the shaitan that was put on them off of them. Or they may want to use the yani a shaitan to yani retaliation upon the one who, who they think put the shaitan on them so on and so forth and they do it the muslims they do it so these things are of extreme relevance so although the people may not be referring back to these particular individuals or yani uh and the like it is important for us to know that these things they happen these things they they go on all the time where and they have to be addressed they have to be addressed People who come from these backgrounds and they have to stay away from the likes of these things and they have to call their people to that which is correct, so on and so forth, which is incumbent for us to, to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the likes of these things by being steadfast upon the dhikr, being steadfast upon the, the supplications that we are supposed to say in the morning and in the evening. And before going to bed, because these things, then they are uh, uh, protections for us. Naam, to be steadfast and vigilant on saying the dua before you enter into the bathroom. These things, they are protections for us. Naam, as we know, the uh, the shayateen and that they like to live in un un unclean places and places like the the bathroom where yani uh, filth is, uh, you know. Deposited and so on and so forth. Naam. So we have to be steadfast upon our ad'i, upon our dua, upon suppli supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard us from the likes of these things and not let our guard be down. But in any event, these things have to be stressed because they happen. People, they, they still dwell with the likes of these things. But how much more absurd individuals who they make in dua to the shayateen. They make in dua to the evil jinn. Naam, the maroda, the evil jinn. They make in dua to them, wa'iyadu billah, working with them, wa'iyadu billah. Naam, these things are horrible. They are from the worst of the affairs. These are things that we have to be on our guard and caution as relates to it. Well, likewise, Shamsan, wa Idris, and yuqalu lahu al ashqar, wa Yusuf, wa amthaluhum. Now, I mean, likewise, Shamsan, wa Idris, and inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna, yeah, and he mentioned, the Shaykh is gonna mention in brief who were these individuals, right? Uh, who was set up, yeah, and he, who, who was also called Al Ashqar, and Yusuf, and the likes of these ones. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'lam, and other than that, Allah ta'ala knows best. Naam. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, Alhamdulillah, awwalan wa akhiran. All the praise, and thanks belong to Allah in the beginning of it and in the end of it. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. And with that, the Shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah ta'ala concludes this tremendous work, this tremendous book. Shaykh Fawzani goes on to explain some of the names in which the Shaykh he mentioned from the awliya uh, and also from some of these um some of these uh sure small these false deities in which the people they they used to worship uh that were relevant in in that time and maybe some of them still now today as well so he mentions ma'roof yani huwa ma'roof al kharkhi al al karkhi that al ma'roof this is ma'roof al karkhi and who he is from the awliya 
المعروفين في العراق and he is from those well known أولياء in Iraq نعم those who يعبدون ال, uh, يعني uh, يعبده القبوريون those who the, the great worshipping people they, they worship him they worship him وعبد القادر جلاني and also عبد القادر جلاني Naam, and the people they still worship him to this day billah. and this is just as an example is not to as a restriction because we know that there are people in Egypt who worship uh, Sayyid Bedawi Naam, uh, and they worship Hussein uh, and they worship Zainab and they worship Aisha billah, and the like Naam. Hal, Abdul Qadir Jalani he was Imam in Al-Imma Al-Hanabila al Qudama, he was from, he was Imam from the Hanbali Madhab. He was a Hanbali Imam, uh, yani, from the past. Wahua Imam Jalil, and he was a righteous, yani, he was a, a, a very good Imam, a noble Imam. But when he died, the people, they started to believe that he can benefit them, and he can help, he can help them, and he can hurt them. Even after his death, they thought he can, Help them, he can hurt them. Naam. So they started to gather around his uh, his grave. And the Sufis they took him as a imam, as as a imam as as, as a imam for one of their tariqa. Naam. Of one of their tariqa, he took him as an imam and so on and so forth. Naam. Uh, of which he is free from the likes of, of these particular things but this, this is one who the people they venerate still to this day نعم وَهُوَ بَرِيءٌ مِنْهُمْ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى but he is he is free from them may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon him فَهُوَ مَعْنُوفِ الصَّلَاحِ وَإِسْتِقَامَ وَالْعِنْ وَالتُقَى وَالتُقَى but he because he was well known for being upright he was well known for Ha- being having good religion and being righteous, he was well known for knowledge. He was well known for fearing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Naam. Wa kana min akabir ashab al madhab Imam Ahmed, and he's from the greatest of the of, of the Imams from uh, the madhab of Imam Ahmed, uh, rahimahumullahu Taala, and he has books in which he has authored. Wallahi uh, alham. And then. Uh, also was mentioned Zayd ibn Khattab and Zayd ibn Khattab is, is one who people they have taken and called upon him وَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ نعم وَهُوَ الصَّحَابِي جليل, and he is a noble companion وَهُوَ أَخُ عُمَرْ ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنهما and he is the brother he was the brother of Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنهما نعم uh and in, in, in the and in the like and also the sheikh he had mentioned uh was zubair ibn awam and zubair ibn awam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was also from the companions of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu naam and also those who were mentioned were Shamsan wa Idris wa Yusuf wa haula tawagheet kanu fi riyad and these were false deities that were in riyad qabla dhuhur al-da'wah to shaykh and this was before the da'wah of shaykh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab they were they were there falamma jaa shaykh but when the shaykh yani they 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 took over riyad wa qama bil jihad fi sabilillah and they fought jihad fi sabilillah wa stawla al-muslimun على الرياض and the Muslims they took over الرياض أزالوا هذه هذه الوثنيات منها ومن غيرها والحمد لله but when they took over الرياض they got rid of all of these false deities and all these idols they they got rid of all these idols from الرياض they cleaned it from idols and other than than that inside of what is now uh, called the kingdom of Saudi Arabia they got rid of any yani, all of the yani, uh, the idols that were there uh, in in that time and they they got rid of them Alhamdulillah, wa lillah alhamd. Naam. Ala the likes of these ones who, those qaburiyun, those grave worshipping people, that they be worshipping. Naam. And subhanallah, as a shaykh he mentioned, as Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the imam he mentioned, was that these individuals, they didn't stop 
you see, it's bad enough alone to worship a righteous person. You follow? It's bad enough alone. It's shirk. It's the worst sin to worship a righteous person. But they didn't even stop with that because that don't make sense. But that which is even more absurd, as the Shaykh mentioned, he says, well, I can know whom lem iktafu bi ibadati him. They didn't stop by just worshiping them, which is absurd. Bel abedu tawarit wal kafra wal marada wal sahara wal kahana. But they went on to worship false deities. They went on to worship kufar. They were on to worship yani, uh, evil jinn. They were on to worship magicians and soothsayers and so on and so on. And how much more absurd is this? You see? But once the shaytan has messed with a person's brain and tricked a person and deceived them and duped them, then subhanAllah, you see to what bounds the shaytan, he will take an individual to destroy them. Naam. And the shaykh, he mentions, he says, well, uh, ibahiyin. And also the ibahiyin. And al ibahi, these are the person who, yani, everything is okay for them. Okay? These, these people have no morals. They're, they're, they're immoral people. They don't care whatever it is that they do. Right? Um, they do what they want, how they want, when they want. You understand? And, 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 and unfortunately, popular culture, has made their cause yani popular wa'iyadu billah do what you like huh whatever you want to do it's okay it's all right so on and so forth this is what these kufar they be saying and wa'iyadu billah a lot of muslim kids is looking up to the likes of these individuals these individuals who live a lifestyle uh what was another sl uh, a slogan in which they saying right now to point to this type of lifestyle as a deflection no one could judge me. Huh? No one can judge me. It's what they say. Because what they mean by it is I'm gonna do what I want how I want and shouldn't nobody say nothing. Subhanallah. This is not from our deen. But you have individuals who are affected by this. Or they're looking up to people who are like this. People who have no morals. They do all kinds of craziness. Naam. You have individuals now who their 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 morals have gone to such an extent of being non-existent that even when it comes to their sexuality huh they they what they say they call themselves fluid they don't see themselves as referring to or being a part of this gender nor of that gender huh but for them they fall in love with whoever they fall in love with whether it's from the opposite gender whether it's from their own gender so on and so forth subhanallah where's it gonna stop where's it gonna stop they, 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 are they, are they, are, I mean, what's next? They're gonna fall in love with their pet. They're gonna fall in love with the with 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 with, with the, the refrigerator. They're gonna fall in love with the microwave. Where did, where does it stop? Where does it stop? But you have individuals, and they looking up to these individuals. Where and this is what they are on. Individuals who have no shyness. They have no shame. They the they the most despicable of individuals. Naam. Where billah. And from these individuals with their despicableness is that you'll find that they'll go to all types of shirk. You'll find that they are they are huh? they are drawn to it. So a lot of them they become Buddhists, right? Uh uh, uh inside this, you know, this type of mysticism, uh what they what they see far eastern mysticism and so on and so forth, be it, yeah, Buddhist or Confucianism or yeah, I mean, whatever the case may be. And this is what they find. Why? Because the likes of these shirky religions, the likes of these polytheistic religions it opens the door for them to, to have this type of this foolishness and for them to lie to themselves and make themselves think that they are really okay when they when they are the sickest of the sick. So it is incumbent and is important that these things be uh, observed and be implemented, meaning that the Tawheed is implemented and that we observe the foundations of our religion and that we observe the rules of our deen and that we stick to our religion and the fundamentals of our religion and the whole of our religion from the beginning of it to the end of it because this is what's going to save us from the likes of these things but in doing that as Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab he mentioned it necessitates for anyone who is yani, who has jealousy for Allah and jealousy for his messenger and jealousy for Allah's deen then when you see the likes of these depraved individuals with their foolishness and with their uh, uh, heinous behavior and with their lack of morals and so on and so forth how is it possible except that you have to hate them 
You cannot find love for the likes of these individuals. You have to hate them because what they are upon is disgusting. It is not that we will find any type of amazement by their lifestyle because their lifestyle is disgusting. Their lifestyle is horrible. Their lifestyle is that which is one that will land a person inside the hellfire forever. So how could you look upon that with any type of eye of admiration? But rather we look at that with an eye of complete hatred for what they are upon and, and, and the individuals who are upon it. Those who are proponents of it. Those who call to it. Those who are practitioners of it. So on and so forth. We hate them and we hate what they do. Now, And how could you not? If you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you love for Allah, how can you not hate them and what they're doing when they are doing that which Allah hates and that which Allah is not pleased with? Now, in any event, it is incumbent that we stick to our deen and we stick to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has sent down unto us. Uh, the Sheikh, Sheikh Fuzan, ta'ala, going back to these al ibahiyun these, these people who say, do what you want, how you want, when you want, everything is okay, so on and so forth. The Sheikh, he says, yani, man tarak al awamir wa nawahi. Yani, uh, these are the ones, yani, al ladina yaqulun, these are the ones they say. And you find a lot of them like these individuals from the Sufiya, from the Sufis. Naam, person say, what's up, Sufi? Not so bad right now. Sufi's horrible. Sufi's horrible. Naam? Sufi's horrible. And you'll see how, listen, from the, from the Sufis, from these Sufis, you understand? You have those who they believe, and they say that من ترك الأوامر والنواهي هو مقرب الله That the one who leaves off the commands, and he leaves off uh, staying away from the prohibitions, then this one is one who was close to Allah. Naam. They say, وَلَيْسَ بِحَاجَ لِلْأَوَامِرْ وَالنَّوَاهِ They said this one, he don't need uh, 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 commands. huh? He don't need uh, prohibitions. So this one, he don't have to pray. It's fine for him. He don't got to pray. This one, he don't got to stay away from eating pork. He can eat pork. He don't got to stay away from drinking alcohol. He can drink if he want. This one, he don't got to stay away from fornication. He can fornicate if he want. It's okay. It's all right. Why? Because he's enlightened. Because he's there. He has reached some type of level. They say, They say that oh, all these prohibitions and commands and all this type of stuff, that's only for the common people. It's a training for the common people. Because the common people, they can't control themselves. So it's a training for them so they can get to that level. But once they got to that level and and, 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 and they know and they, and, and they have what they think is yaqeen, so on and so forth, then they don't have to pray no more. They don't got to fast no more. They don't got to give zakat. They don't got to make hajj. They don't have to lower their gaze. They don't have to. They don't have, they don't have to do whatever they want. It's fine. A'udhu billah. It's fine. Years ago in Egypt, I was <laughs> thumbing through uh, yeah, the, uh, a, a book, and it was called it was called stupidity. Right? The book was called stupidity, and they brought in its stories, uh, and most of these stories from, was from the Sufis. Damn, S stories from the Sufis of of actual life events and things of this nature. Anyway, one story that stuck out in my mind it was one Sufi, uh, quote unquote, one of them, Mashaykh, was an evil individual. Anyway, he came out of his house one day on Jumu'ah naked he had no clothes on none whatsoever he come out of his house naked right and and you know boastfully you know walking pride chest out and he walks and he walks uh, uh you know out in front of the people like this and instead of the people yani you know, these sufis instead of them censoring him and instead of them rebuking him and telling him to fear allah go put clothes on and so on and so forth you know what they said they said oh look subhanallah the sheikh he don't even need clothes no more so you see <laughs> Do you see the stupidity? So now you see why it, yeah, that, 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 that incident yeah, made it to the book of stupidity. Because this is the epitome of what is stupid. Nah, but this is the like of what these Sufis are upon. That you reach, you, you reach such a level that you don't have to worry about the halal and the haram no more. You could do what you want, how you want. It's fine. Because you reach that level. Uh, and the Sheikh, he's, uh, he mentions, he said, and the Sufis, they say, you know, as far as the likes of this individual, but what's like Allah? They say he has reached Allah. He don't need nothing. Subhanallah. You see how shaitan plays with the people? You see how the shaitan, he plays with the people? Ya ibad. In order for us not to be played with, we have to learn what is our religion. We have to learn what are the 
principles, the rules and regulations of our religion. If not, then the shaitan, he'll be able to play with us like he has played with these people. And don't believe for one second that the shaitan will come to you with plots that begin where these people are at. You understand? Don't believe that for a second. But rather the shaitan, he will come to you with little stuff first. Trick you with the little stuff. Then he'll add to it. 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 So on and so forth. Now, if you look at the likes of what the Sufiya, they say about their quote-unquote awliya, these ones who they feel have reached a level that they don't need halal or haram no more. They can do what they want, how they want, when they want. If you examine this, you will find that this is what? This is the end. This is the end. This is the conclusion of what? Of them deifying human beings. Of them deifying human beings and sanctifying human beings and believing that these certain human beings, then they are, yani, you know, uh, so righteous and so holy that thus they become what? infallible they can't make a mistake they're not wrong no matter what they do it's not wrong if they can make a mistake it's fine it's not wrong you find this is from what this is from the epitome and the end result of what a blind following a blind following that you just go for whatever just because this particular individual this particular personality this particular uh one said it so you go with it it's fine he said it. No, no, it came from him, so it's fine. Huh? You can't make a mistake. So on and so forth. Don't think that we can't be tricked by the likes of this. Because, billah, unfortunately, we see it. We see it. Anytime an individual say, no, Sheikh so-and-so said, okay, and that's, that's the end of it? Because Sheikh so-and-so said? This is no disrespect to the ulama at all. Not at all. But the reality is, is that what? Is that the statements of the ulama, they are not proof. But rather the statements of the ulama are in need of proof. Anytime a person says, no, but Sheikh so-and-so said it, that's it. That, it, it. that can't be it. Let me give you an example why. Those scholars who we all agree are great imams of the religion, are great imams of the religion, Right? Those scholars who we all attest to their knowledge and their level and their superiority of knowledge, we don't accept from any of them the likes of this. If some if you were to ask me something and I said, Imam Ahmed said, and I stopped, we would, would that calm your soul? No. But rather you'll say what? But what's the proof? If I said, no, brother, you got to do it like X, Y, and Z. Because Imam Ahmed said X, Y, and Z. You're going to say, but what's the proof? Correct? Huh? <laughs> Correct? Yeah, that's what you're going to say. What's the proof? Now, I can't go with that. But if, I, if you ask me something, I said, no, but Imam Malik said it was okay. You're going to ask for, well, what is the proof? If I said Imam Al-Shafi said it was okay, you're going to say what? What's the proof? If I said... Imam Abu Hanifa said it's okay. You're going to say, but what? What's the proof? You're not just going to accept it. You're going to say, what's the proof? Okay, so if it is respectful for you to ask the proof, if I said Imam Ahmed said it, then how come I can't say Sheikh so-and-so said it? And then ask for the proof. Or if someone say Sheikh so-and-so said it, how come I can't ask for the proof? Then it's not, then now I'm being disrespectful. Now I'm talking mad about the sheikh. Now I'm making fun of the sheikh. What, what kind of foolishness is this? You understand? What kind of foolishness is this? So don't think that people can't be tricked and fooled by these things because we see people being tricked and fooled by these things. By Allah, there was an individual, and it's not the time for, for names. This is this right now is not the time for names. But when it's a time for names, and the names will be inserted. No problem. Now Anyway, an individual, he said, Sheikh so-and-so has not made a mistake in over 25 years. Yeah, subhanAllah. Who believes that? Who believes a person can have a 25-year streak of not making a single mistake? 
Who believe, who in a right mind believe that? Are we Salafi or Sufi? Huh? Are we Salafi or we Sufi? That sounds like something a Sufi would say. No problem. I mean, Sufi say it is absurd. I mean, that's how the Sufi you are. So you, you, you expect absurd things from them. But a person that claimed to be Salafi saying something like that? Yeah, subhanAllah. We gotta go back to the drone board. We gotta go back to learn what is a Salafiyah. We gotta go back to learn the Kawai, the principles of a Dawa Salafiyah. Cause obviously people don't know. I give you another example of something that, 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 that is absurd. So that you don't think that this, this, this speech is not relevant to you right now. No, it's relevant to you right now because people who claim to be upon the Sunnah are infringing upon things that, yeah, I mean, you would think will never be a friend upon by a person upon a son. Let me give you an example. People going too far as relates to Mashaykh. There was a scholar, right? This is a, a recent occurrence. Right? Anybody challenge me. Challenge me on what I'm saying. The proof is there. Their statements are there. Because these people are foolish enough to put this stuff, you know, to say this stuff publicly. Huh? Put it online, Facebook, Twitter, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. Anyway, comes a statement from Sheikh so and so. Everybody in the chain of it is unknown. So was so the brother asks, Uncle, who are these people who are narrating upon the Sheikh that he said such and such? Who are these people? The response becomes, I don't know who these people are, but it's irrelevant because I'm not, I'm just telling you what the Sheikh is saying. You with me? The people is unknown. We don't know. And they're saying that the sheikh says so and so. Okay? Sheikh says such and such. So the brother asks, who are the people in this chain who are, who are narrating this incident? Why? Because we want to know, we can verify that that's what actually happened. He says, I don't know. He says, so then why are you spreading it? He says, because I'm just telling you what the sheikh said. I ain't worrying about these people. Forget that. I'm telling you what the sheikh said. Ya yeah, subhanallah, who would think a Salafi would talk like this? Huh? When it comes to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Oh, no, this is what the person said before I go into that. He said, the Shaykh is well known. Oh, subhanallah. So the Shaykh is known, so the other people don't have to be known in the chain? When it comes to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam well known? Of course, it's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But if the people in the chain are unknown, do we attribute that statement or that action to the Prophet Sallallahu No. The hadith is da'if. We don't attribute it to the Prophet Sallallahu Why? Because the narrators are unknown. So the information cannot be verified. This is how it works with the Prophet Sallallahu But this person wants us to believe that it worked differently with Shaykh so-and-so? Do you see how the shaitan is playing with people? Do you see how the shaitan is doing with the people? And of course, we gotta, we gotta, you yeah, need to be hard upon it right now because you know where it ends? It ends in what the Sheikh was talking about. It ends in what the, yeah, the, the Imam Muhammad Abu Wahab, he mentioned right here. It ends in what Sheikh Fozani mentioned. That's where it ends at. It didn't start there, but that's where it ends. Now you got people right now claiming to be upon the Sunnah, and you see where they at? You see where they going? We have to be warned. You have to be aware of these things. This is not from our deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, All of the children of Adam make mistakes. All of them. All of the children of Adam make mistakes. If you think that Sheikh so-and-so can't make a mistake, something is wrong with you. If you think and you deem the correction of the mistake of a scholar to be disrespectful, then something is wrong with you. If you think that Correcting a mistake of a scholar is to speak ill of that scholar, then something is wrong with you. This is not from Salafia. We don't accept it when, 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 when the people of innovation do it with their scholars, but yet it's acceptable because people are doing it with a scholar who is Salafi. People need to wake up. This is not right. At all. People need to hold on to their religion. Hold on to the principles of the deen. But let me tell you something. You cannot hold on to the principles of the deen. If you don't know what they are. So it's incumbent that we study. 
And with that, this brings us to the end of this particular book, tremendous book by the great Imam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Shaykh Imam Muhammad Abdul Wahab to forgive him of his sins, to raise his rank in the highest rank of Jannah, and to bless and preserve and reward tremendously Shaykh Fawzan for explaining this tremendous book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit all of us by that which he has taught us and teach us that which benefits us. Bihnilahi ta'ala with that this particular book and series is concluded. Fa naktafi bihada al qadar. Anything I said in it that was correct, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything of mistakes and errors that came therein, then verily this is from myself or the shaytan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا